Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways, while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting farmers who are very keen on keeping cows. In fact, they have 14 cows. Tony, do you think each cow is going to answer to its name when it's called? And do you think that any cow might respond to the name Caro? Hmm. Maybe if it's given some cake. Hmm. But let's go find out. Ah, uh -uh. Tony, don't tell me you also want cake for you to come to work. Okay. Some cake, Tony. Tony, some cake. <laughs> some <little pass. laughs> Today we are in Tharakanithi and we are visiting farmers Moraithi and Catherine Jaggi. They have two children and this is their youngest, Edna Kawera. Their farm covers three acres and includes coffee, tea and some newly planted avocado trees. But cows are their main passion. And that's why today we are doing a double story on cows so we can bring our farmers and you at home some extra special tips on dairy management. I can't wait to get started. Let's go and meet them. Yes. Ah, ah there you are. <laughs> huh? Moravi. Yes, yes. How are you, Catherine? Ah. Fine, thank you. Okay. Now, tell us, how can we help you? Mm. What is your main challenge? My main challenge is in uh, cattle. Fertility is a big problem. Once our cows get, get, do the calving, they stay extended time. How long we, have we, you stayed? I've got two years stayed for a year. Oh. And they are the best. Oh. That is the problem. That is the okay. tricky part of it. So, Catherine, yeah. do you help with the cows? Yes, I do. How? I do help in milking. milking. You don't find me in the chamber. Yes. You find me where the cows are or in the kitchen. Ah. Uh -huh. That is where I want to find you now, the kitchen. Yes. What mode of cooking do you use? I use firewood, mm -hmm. I use gas. Uh -huh. Getting firewood is not easy. Mm -hmm. Cooking with it, you get a lot of smoke. Oh, I'm allergic, by the way. Okay. And oh. when I get smoke, sometimes I am blocked. Sorry yeah, to sorry hear about that. that. Yeah, sorry yes. about that. Well, fear not. Shamba Shape Up is here. Kindly give us some time so that we can pitch the tent and get to work. Okay. See you later. We'll see you later. What I like about Shamba Shape Up is their program, how they teach. But I've never thought any one time I would see them in my home. So I'm surprised. <laughs> I was eager to meet them and see them doing work practically. Well then, we better pitch the tent and get ready for work. So, our first expert today is Samuel Mwema from Agrifor. He's here on behalf of the Eco Business Fund and we've invited him to help Moraithi with his avocados. If farmers want a big avocado harvest, then making sure the trees get the right nutrition throughout their life is very important. First, let's check some young trees around a year old. The major problem with, with the avocados, mm. they were not growing properly. Okay. Because some were growing, others were, was, were stunted, mm -hmm. and some dried. Some dried. So I was wondering why. Like this particular one, yes. it's an avocado tree. How long has it been here? Been mm. Around 10 months. 10 yes. months. That's yes. almost a year, short yeah. of two months. Yeah. And you also say that you've never done a soil test. Ah, I've never done. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Samuel, yes. Buana Moraidi wants to be an avocado farmer. I'm a beginner. Mm. Yes. This is the first time I've never planted any avocados. Either. Before? Yeah. Your land is good, generally, for avocado farming. Mm -hmm. But it's, the soils are a bit clay. They need to be a bit well drained. Mm -hmm. The biggest issue was the soil and the nutrition management mm -hmm. whereby you did not do a soil test which is the first thing you should have done sure. okay. so the biggest element for your orchard is to plan it well 
To help with the planning, we asked Winfred Wanjira from Fadili, Africa to do a soil test for us. She's using an AgroCare's hand scanner that can give results in less than 20 minutes. Before the new technology, farmers used to take soil for sampling and it used to take so many days. They could wait for maybe a month or so before they got their results. But now it is better because you get the, the results instantly. This soil test shows that the key soil parts that avocados need, such as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, are all good. So, no need for Muraydi to spend money on fertilizers. Instead, the test suggests our farmer simply adds lime to balance the soil and some manure to help with the soil drainage. This will help water pass through the soil easily and get to the roots. Avocados do not like wet soils, and this could be the reason why some of Moravi's young trees are not doing well. Okay, now the second stage of planning is spacing. There are a variety of different plants around the avocados. Is this a good idea? Do they help the avocado, or are they taking away nutrients? It depends on the, the, the crops that you plant along with the right. avocado. Mm -hmm. The skooma are heavy feeders. The chaos are heavy feeders mm. for nitrogen, so you might uh, really lose. But the pepper, this pepper is good. When the, the fruit and the pepper fruit dries up, it uh, repels insects. Mm -hmm. So it also helps. Which are the right crops or suitable crops to plant next to your avocado? For the first five years, you can plant cover crops. You can uh, do uh, legumes. Legumes, uh, legumes beans. Like, uh, pigeon peas, beans, mm -hmm. uh, because they also fix nitrogen. You can also do f uh, livestock fodder crops like desmodium, mm -hmm. mainly because they, it's also a good cover crop. Mm -hmm, the and grasses. also it's also complementing your other farm activities. Mm -hmm. um, you can still plant avocado alongside other tree species. Like I see our farmer has planted the tree tomato, mm -hmm. which has a different growth hab habit compared to avocado okay. because it shall shrub doesn't grow tall, mm -hmm. still is able to get some fruits. Mm -hmm. But you can still do other trees like mangoes, like papayas. And of course, if you have gotten your spacing right, so that at least off season, you are able to still get income from the other trees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, let's take a look at a mature tree. This tree is around five years old and fruiting. How can we boost next season's harvest for this tree? Yes. How old is this one? Around this Five years. Five years. Yes, yes. So even after fruiting and then harvesting, what do you normally do to your tree? What I'm already uh, in just the way you plant it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just the way you plant it, you leave it like that. I so I have never any, done anything. Done anything. So that's how he's been managing. Is that right, really? Despite the fact that the phosphorus content in your soil is very high, you still need to substitute because when you are harvesting, you're actually taking off nutrients with the fruits of the harvest. Mm -hmm. Because they, for them to form, they require a lot of nutrition. It's energy consuming. And one of the elements that is uh, depleted in high amounts is phosphorus and the nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what you do, yeah. just after harvesting, get some well decomposed uh, manure. You can see the canopy of the tree where it is rich. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, exactly at the edge of the canopy, mm -hmm. you dig a trench of about um, 25 to 30 centimeters deep. Mm -hmm. The reason why you do it at the canopy is because the assumption is that the roots are up to the, where the canopy is. Mm -hmm. Then you apply about uh, 50 kilograms of uh, well decomposed manure. 50 kgs per tree? Yes. Then you cover. So that when the rains rain, okay. so they you will start uh, taking the nutrients. Okay. And your tree will g give you a better yield than how it was giving you. So good management starts right from when they are young yes. up to this point. Yes. But I'm already? Yes. Do you think this is something you still want to venture into? Very much. Very much? And I think I've acquired what I really needed. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And so I'm the, very happy. The market demand for avocado is so high. And the exporters will look for you if you have a well-managed orchard. Mm -hmm. And also it's food. You are still able to supply the local market for food. Sure. Yes. I would like to advise the young people, farming is a business like any other business. It brings income, it can employ you if you take farming seriously. While Carol was finding out how to keep avocado trees healthy, I asked Stephen Kanye from Coopers to visit 
and tell us how good nutrition can make cows more fertile. Mr. Brady, you had a very big challenge. My big problem is a fertility. Yes. My cows are not getting on either uh, on heat as required. Okay. So I don't know where that problem starts from. Oh, I have seen uh, yeah. that you have very good cows. Yes. And you also have the heifers here. Yes. You know the problem with the fertility starts from the heifers. Yes. But you are going to address it so that you can have very good, very good herd. What about increasing production? Yeah, even production, you are going to get it okay. because uh, when you come from the heifer, yes. you address the fertility issues, okay. then you are going to go to the adult. So from the heifers, so, then you go to the adults. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Muraithi's cows take four months to come on heat. Some take as long as 11 months. This seems much too long to me. A good cow should uh, take 45 days to 90 days after calving for the cow to come on heat back. 45 to 90, 90 days. days. Yes. That's a big challenge for our farmer. Yes. How does he address it? Two things must match. One is good management, and the other one is breeding. And uh, today we are going to talk about, uh, mostly about good management practices. We have to talk about record keeping and also nutrition. That is uh, giving proper uh, diet to the cows. And uh, when you talk about uh, record keeping, you have to get good records for the cows. One, you have to know where the cow, you got the cow from. The time that uh, the cow gave birth, you're going to get the record of the age of the cow. So you're going to get the deworming records. You're going to do the treatment records and also the insemination records. All the records must be there for us to get to know how the cow is progressing. So, record books are important as they help farmers track cow fertility and find problems when they occur. But what about nutrition? So a cow must get a ration that has five ingredients, and which are very important when you are dealing with fertility issues. One, we have to provide carbohydrates and vitamins. The other one is minerals. The other one is water. And the fifth one, protein. Let's recap. For good fertility, a cow needs these five key ingredients in every meal. One, carbohydrates. So you cut the napier grass together with hay and you should provide to a cow three to four percent of the body weight per day. And two, vitamins from feeds. Three, water, fresh and clean. Four, minerals. So for the minerals, we are going to provide Marklick Plus. Uh, this one is uh, the mineral designed for the cows, for the fertility. Mm. And uh, this one is going to assist you in uh, bringing the cow to, uh, to fertility. They are going to come on heat. You provide Marklick Plus a free choice to the cows. In heifer that is from six months onwards, you provide 100 to 150 grams per day. Per day. But we usually recommend Ad Libitum. Ad Libitum is free choice and five, protein. Fodder such as Napier and Caliandra have protein too, but the levels of protein are not enough to meet a cow's daily needs. So for the proteins, you are going to provide Cupa Cola, which has a very high protein content, that is 48%. And when you provide Cupa Cola, the cow is going to build up on its body and the, uh, the body is going to respond very fast. You mix uh, 5 kgs of Cooper Cooler in 70 kgs of uh, dairy meal or pollard. If it is a heifer, you feed 0 0.5 kgs per day. And if it is uh, uh, the older cows, you just feed 200 grams. That is a minimum of 200 grams per day. So that is what you do with a protein supplement. When you combine the five components or the five ingredients, then you make a very good and balanced ration. So the issues to do with fertility, the issues to do with heat, also the issues to do with production, they are going to be eliminated here from your farm. So Kanye, is there anything else that we should address? Yes, Tony, we are going to talk about steaming up. Ah, stay with us, there will be more right after the break. We are not only learning about steaming up cows, we have a battle between two steaming pressure cookers, gas versus electricity. We see who wins. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. 
We are in Tarakanithi and we are visiting Moreithi and Catherine Jagi. Carol. Yes, Tony. Catherine wants to learn more about how to take care of our cows. Do you think you are capable of doing that? Mm -hmm, Tony, that should be easy. But only if you promise to do one thing. What? You do the cooking. Ah, uh -huh, no problem at all. You know, we men now are up and coming chefs. And you women better be scared. Women are shaky. Mm. I can't wait to see that, Tony. Now, that's a challenge. All right, see you later, Carol. Later. Catherine wants strong, healthy cows and calves. So I'm going to find out why good nutrition is important in the four to six weeks before a cow gives birth. It's a period known as steaming up. Now, what problems has Catherine been having with the cows? Mm, when the cow gives birth, you see sometimes it has fallen. Yeah. It falls down. It falls. Because it's weak or you... It is weak. I, I understand it is calcium. Uh, lack of calcium. Catherine has talked about uh, a cow that has deficiencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to talk about how to take care of that pregnant cow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that you can get very good cows that are healthy that are not having any instances of uh, falling or having milk fever, mm -hmm. and also cows that are going to give you maximum production, mm -hmm. high production. Mm -hmm. You have a cow here that is pregnant, mm -hmm. we're going to address how to steam up. Mm -hmm. Steaming up is that extra care that you give to a cow mm -hmm. four to six weeks before the cow uh, gives birth. Mm -hmm. First, we are going to start with the objectives that you have as a farmer. Mm -hmm. Why do you need that extra care for that cow that is pregnant, that is almost giving birth. Mm -hmm. One is that you want to have this cow getting maximum production when the cow calves down. Mm -hmm. Number two, you want the cow to have a growth and repair of the other tissues. Mm -hmm. And number three, you want to minimize the incidences of the milk fever or the incidences of deficiency in calcium. Mm -hmm. So to get that, you have to get the basics right. One you have to provide good fodder and that should be three to four percent of the body weight of a cow. Feed good quality fodder such as Bracaria and Caliandra. To find out how much to give, find the cow's weight using a weigh band. Place it around the cow's middle just behind the front legs. The fodder should weigh three percent of the cow's weight. For a cow weighing 300 kilos, give 9 kilograms of quality grass per day. Then you are going to provide proteins. The Kupakura will provide enough protein, that is 48% uh, of protein that the cow requires so that it can avoid incidences of deficiency in calcium. And this cow requires the body building so that the tissue of the mother and the tissues of the baby can grow. Also, the protein will help in uh, growth and repair of the other tissues. Then we go to number three. We are going to provide mineral salts for the cows. You are going to provide maclic dry cow. Mm. And you are going to give the, for the two months. You always give 100 grams per day, which is about uh, four tablespoons per day. That is two in the morning and two in the evening. Mm -hmm. And because you are doing extra supplementation, mm -hmm. you provide the macric dry cow mm -hmm. together with a mineral brick. Mm -hmm. We hang this on the, the cow shed so that that animal that is pregnant, mm -hmm. the supplementation of minerals, if it is not getting enough of 100 grams of macric dry cow, mm -hmm. then any time the cow leaks and we have to provide enough water. Fresh and clean. If you do all that, the animal is going to give you a good calf and you are not going to get incidences mm -hmm. of milk fever. Mm -hmm. So having done that, I think Catherine will get very good cow that is going to give you very high production, very good calf, mm -hmm. and in future you are going to get very fertile cows and you are not going to have any problems of infertility. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Shamba Shepherd Farming News for Kenya.
in the coming week, we expect less rain across most parts of Kenya. The whole country is expected to have rains of between 0 and 25 millimeters, with very few places receiving up to 50 millimeters of rain. Northern, northeastern, lower eastern Kenya, and southern parts of Kenya are expected to have little rains of less than 5 millimeters. This includes Turkana, Marsabit, Samburu, Isiolo, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, Tana River, Taita Taveta, Kajiado, Makweni, and Kitui. The coastal region, including Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Kwale, is expected to get 5 to 15 millimeters of rain, with some areas in Kwale and Kilifi getting between 25 and 50 millimeters of rain. The majority of central Kenya and neighboring counties, including Tarakanithi, Embu, Kirinyaga, Laikipia, Meru, and Nyeri, expect little rain of less than 5 millimeters. The same goes for Nairobi, Kiambu, and Machakos. North, central, and south Rift Valley, in including Transzoia, Wasingishu, Nakuru, Narok, Kericho, Nandi, and Bomet, expect rains of less than 15 millimeters. Western Kenya and Nyanza regions, including Kakamega, Siaya, Vihiga, Kisumu, Homabe, and Migori, expect rains of between 5 to 15 millimeters. However, parts of Bungoma, Kisi, and Nyamira may get up to 25 millimeters of rain. As the rains get less, it's important you mulch your crops to keep them moist. Also, keep weeding your shamba to stop weeds competing with your crops for water and nutrients. Farmers, this is also the time pests and diseases attack your crops. Fruit trees, like mangoes, are about to start flowering too. Check all your crops for pests or diseases and take action. Get in touch with iShamba on 0711-082-606 for what to do. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News. Now, my final job on the Shamba today is to help Catherine in the kitchen. She tells me she has some problems cooking with wood inside the house, and I can see why. There's a lot of soot here. I have invited Wairimu, better known as Cooking with Nemo, to see if she can help Catherine find a better way to cook. She's setting up outside the tent. I've asked Caro to send her and Catherine over to me because I think I've come up with a great idea myself. It's a faster way of cooking using a pressure cooker. When he heard of our challenges with our cooking, I came with a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. And I thought that if she could use this uh, pressure cooker here, this might be able to help her. What do you think, Nemo? Well, I think it's a good idea. It's better to cook on a pressure cooker compared to the firewood because it saves time and it's easier to light up and you'll cook your food faster. I think I have a better solution to this, um, which is faster, safer, and will save you a lot of money compared to your method of using currently. Um, we can go outside and see what Carol has in store. We can also still use this and see which one will work best. I would like to. Yeah. All right, let's go have a look. Okay. Let's go. So, Carol. Ah, there you are. Are you ready to I compete? I am ready. I've are seen, you? I've seen you brought the big guns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Catherine. Normally, I know you make uh, githeri around this region. Yes. So we are going to make githeri. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a mixture of maize and, and beans. beans. Good. Mm -hmm. So I've come with an electric pressure cooker. It uses electricity to cook, and it is supposed to reduce your time when cooking. Whatever you're cooking, even if it's githeri. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> now, to begin, I'm going to connect the pressure cooker to the power meter to be able to tell us uh, the exact amount of money that we have spent when making the githeri and the time. A quick difference between what I've brought and what you have there. Uh, this electric pressure cooker uses electricity and this one, the normal one, uses fire. It requires any form of fire. We will see what time it takes to prepare the food between the two pressure cookers. Aha. Uh, Catherine, how long does it take for you to cook your githeri? Ah, it takes two hours. Two hours? Yes. And how much firewood do you spend on A that? A lot of firewood. What was that sound? When you close the electric pressure cooker, it has a melody to tell you that the pressure cooker has been safely closed. I'm sure even mine has some melody of some sort. There you go. Can't hear anything. <laughs> 
Now, Carol, you're going to set the cooking timer to 20 minutes. So I go up to 20, 20. and I start. Yeah. And Tony, just switch on the gas. Hmm. I like that. <laughs> we will be able to tell when the pressure has started with yours from the whistle. And for this one, we will also see from, from this pin. The pin will come up? The pin will come up. For the electric pressure cooker, you'll hear no hissing. Very impressed. Mm -hmm. yes. So do you have any questions? Yes, I have a question. Mm. When the water has, has evaporated, how will you know? Will it dry or the way it becomes black or...? With the electric pressure cooker, mm -hmm. the, once the water has run out, the pressure cooker will just automatically stop. Mm -hmm. So there is no time that your food will ever burn. Mm -hmm. The manual pressure cooker is being controlled by fire, mm -hmm. so it is more likely to burn your food when the water runs out. Mm -hmm. uh, safety to the user. Is this one f more friendlier than this one? The uh, electric pressure cooker is safer. As you can see, I can touch it as it's cooking with my bare hands, but I would not advise Tony for oh, you to touch because oh. it's, it's metal all round. Yes. Uh, how about if kids knock it down? Even if it falls right now, it would not open because there is a safety lock on the side. What is that sound? My food is ready. And mine? Hmm? You should turn it off yes. because we, for the even time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Drum rolls, voila! Mm. Oh! Mm. Shall we do mine? Yes. So now, Tony. Oh. <laughs> so, Nemo, how much did it cost to make our meal? So, with reference to our power meter, we spent between five shillings and six shillings. Very cheap. Okay. Now, we have a judge here. Mm. There you go. How nice, huh? I mean, it's not yet. <clears throat> And the beans? Uh, at this second, some seconds. Mm. Mm. There you are. Mm. Okay. Is it ready? It is ready. Mm -hmm. Yes. So no. who's the, who the winner? Who's the winner? Carol is the winner. Oh, yeah! Yeah, 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 I yeah, demand yeah. a recount. <laughs> Mr. Moravi, you've yes. come at the right time. I think these three are very unfair to me. Yes. I deserve to win, don't you think? You are very good. Okay. Good, good. Please, please. Uh -huh. What do you think? How is the maize? How is the maize? The maize a bit hard. But it's got some flavor uh -uh. in it. Don't push is... it, don't push it. Take a lot, take a lot. You'll not regret this. What do you think? This is the best. Thank that's you. the best? Yeah. That's the best? Mm. Well, that's all we have this week. We'll see you next time on Shamba Shepa. Bye! Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>